Good afternoon, Great Commission kids. I'm so glad that you guys could join us for another Wednesday night class. This week we are finishing up learning about the Great Commission. We know the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19 says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Today we are finishing that up with why the Great Commission is so important. So if you would, close your eyes and bow your heads so we can pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this time, this opportunity we have to come and get together with you. Help us to learn about the Great Commission. Learn why it is so important for us to fulfill this duty that God has given us. Do what he has called us to do. Help us to focus and pay attention to this video. Most of all, help us have fun. In Jesus' name, everybody says, Amen. So, let's play a quick game of the clapping game. When I clap, you clap. If I don't clap, you don't clap. Here we go. Ready? Oh, if you clapped, you're out. Let's keep going. Yep. Oh, if you clapped, you're out. If you clapped, you're out. Let's keep going. Okay, I say we'll call it there. If you didn't get out at all, you are the winner. Good job. Now, let's jump over to our scripture verse today. See what Elo can tell us about why the Great Commission is so important. Today's scripture verse is found in Matthew 24, 14. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world, and then the end will come. Matthew 24, 14. Let's see it one more time. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world, and then the end will come, Matthew 24, 14. You see, that word, the end, means when it is finished. When we preach the gospel to all the world, we are preparing for God to be finished so that we can go back up to heaven with him. That's why it's so important that we share God's love now so that everybody that can can be led to Jesus. Pretty cool, huh? Ha! I'll see you guys later. Bye! So, there's a big clock in the spirit. The big clock is telling God what time it is. Because he's preparing for something very special to happen when it strikes midnight. Because he has something prepared. We know from the beginning, in the beginning... After God created everything, Adam and Eve sinned. He had a plan the whole time to save us from sin. Somewhere around here-ish, he uh, flooded the earth, and Noah built the ark. And he wiped out sin that way. But sin is part of who we are. It's part of our nature. So he's been playing this whole time for that midnight hour to strike so that he could bring his people back to him. It says in the Bible that Jesus talked about the 11th hour is now, meaning that between here and here is what we've been living. God is coming back very soon. And our goal for when God comes back, when that clock strikes midnight, when it hits that midnight hour, Jesus is waiting to see as many people as he can reach for him. As many people as he can follow him. If we're called to be followers of Christ, to make disciples, to teach others to follow Christ, it's our job to see as many people as we can saved, baptized, and being discipled, being taught to follow God being taught to be a follower of Jesus. Are you prepared? That's what we're going to talk about today, is being prepared, is teaching others and understanding how important this Great Commission is and why it is so important for us 
to be true Great Commission kids. Sometimes Christian kids say, well, I know Jesus is coming again. I want to see him, but I, I don't want him to come yet. They say, I want to grow up first. I want to go to college, get a job, drive a car, get married, have kids. I want to know what it's like to be a grown-up. Has anyone watching this ever felt like that before? You know what? When you get to heaven, you aren't going to care anymore. It will be like this. Imagine I said to you that I'm going to take you to uh, Kings Island for the whole day, and I'm paying for everything. You can go on as many rides, eat as many things as you want, and get as many toys as you want. Would you be excited? So let's say that day arrives and we all get ready to get on the bus. We're all excited, and then suddenly I say, sorry kids, but we've had a change of plans. Uh, I, I can't take you to Kings Island anymore. How would you feel? You would feel very disappointed. But what if I continued and said, but instead, I'm taking you for a whole week to Disney World. Which place is better? Of course, it's Disney World. It has better rides. There's more things to do. There's actually no comparison between the two. That's the difference between growing up and doing all the things that grown-ups do and getting to go to heaven. There's no comparison. Any grown-up will tell you that there's no contest between the two. Being a grown-up isn't great as it seems. It comes with a lot of responsibilities, a lot of problems. There's nothing we have to even compare to walking on the streets of gold, swimming in the river of life, eating the most incredibly heavenly food that we've never had before and never getting sick, never getting cavities in your teeth, getting to play night and day, dancing around the throne of God. Who knows? Maybe even hopping around the planets for fun. More than anything else, there's nothing that can compare to being in the presence of Jesus. That's what we want our, fir our friends and loved ones to share with us as well. Let's all preach the gospel to the nations so the end can come. It's a good end. It's the best ending to anyone's story you'll ever hear. But it's not going to be very much fun for the people who are left here on earth when Jesus comes. In fact, it's not fun to talk about that at all. The Bible tells us it's the presence of us Christians in the world that make things as good as they are. It's called salt. Here I have some seasoning salt. Salt makes your food taste better. But salt does more than just make your food taste better. It preserves food. You know what that means? It means it keeps food from spoiling or going rotten. For instance, if we didn't have salt in our pickles or salt in our beef jerky, they would have spoiled a long time ago and gotten extremely rotten. But by adding salt to them, they can be kept for a longer period of time. The Bible says we Christians are like salt in the world. Things are better because we're here, because we hold God's standard in our heart of love, goodness, kindness, mercy, patience, righteousness, and many other things. It makes this world a better place to live in. The Bible says we hold back evil and darkness from taking over, when you think about all the bad things that happen in the world with us here, can you imagine what it would be like if there was no one left to stand up for what is right? That's exactly what's going to happen when Jesus raptures us out of here. Everything that has been holding back the devil from being worse than he already is will be removed. There will be no one to stop him or his slimy demons. What a world that will be. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want any of my friends or loved ones left in an environment like that.
The Bible tells us one day, when we least expect it, the Archangel Michael is going to blow a trumpet in the heavens. Only those of us who love the Lord will hear the trumpet sound. When we hear the trumpet, the Bible says to look up to the sky because of redemption. Jesus is coming to get us. It says at that moment in the eastern sky, Jesus will come in the cloud of glory and take us to be with him. What a day that's going to be. Let's take as many people with us as we can. We don't want to leave anyone behind. This is why the Great Commission is important. This is why we've been learning how we fulfill the Great Commission, how we do what God's called us to do, how we fulfill the purpose that God has given us. Because in the end, we're doing it for an important reason. It's very, 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 very important that we follow the Great Commission, that we share God's love, that we show his love to others and that others can see his love shining through us. Are you fulfilling the Great Commission today? Are you being a witness to the world around us? Are you doing what you're supposed to do as a follower of Christ? Because we don't want to see anybody that we care about left behind. We have to go into all the world and not just tell them about Jesus, but make disciples, make followers of Jesus so that they can be baptized in water and make that proclamation to the world around them that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. Because the next verse, Matthew 28, 19, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 20 says, teaching them to do all that I have commanded, and I will be with you even to the end of the age. Amen. What that means is when we teach others, when others that are following us and we're following Jesus, we are a light to our neighbors. Because when we teach others to do as the Lord's commanded and people follow it, he will be with us. He will guide us even to the very end. And it ends with a word that's very familiar to us, but I don't think many of us know what the word means. That verse ends with the word, Amen. That means it is done. It is finished. It will be accomplished. When we say in Jesus' name, Amen, that means that my prayer is, is finalized. There's a stamp of finalization on what I am saying, of importance of what I am saying. So if we go into all the world, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to do all that Jesus has commanded, he will be with us to the end of the age. Amen. He will be with us. It is finished. It is finalized. How many people are you going to be bringing with you? How many people are you witnessing to? How many people are you spreading the word of God to? We have to share the love of God. We have to fulfill the Great Commission. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this time that we've had. As we've gone through the Great Commission, as we've discussed the Word of God, as we've discussed what you would have us do, God, and the purpose that you put us here for. Thank you for showing us why it is so important that we share your love, that we spread the Word of God to those around us. Help us to fulfill that Great Commission today. In Jesus' name, everybody says, Amen. Remember, challenge still on for Wednesday nights. Memorize the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19. Come tell me. First time you come tell me the Great Commission, I will have a special big prize just for you. But as you notice, I'm not announcing it in the videos. I haven't been asking you if you know the Great Commission on Sundays. 
you have to engage. You have to be the one to say, I know the Great Commission. Because I want this to be our little secret for those that are actually paying attention to both Sunday and Wednesday videos all the way through. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be starting something very special next week. Goodbye.